Hi, this is Steve Walton from Tropic Heating and PatioHeat.com. Today we're going to take a look at this residential application. The residents would like to um, retrofit a uh, flush mount system into their existing stucco ceiling here. And um, I'm going to give you guys a couple of uh, approaches as to how you might accomplish that. Um, as well as uh, placement of the heaters and um, so let's go ahead and uh, look at some dimensions here real quick and I when I do the image tracing I can take an image and with a given dimension and the customer gave me this eight foot height of a ceiling um, I could trace out what the uh, building can approximately look like so um, that's how I do that and let's just go ahead and look at um, this particular application where they would like to have the uh, units placed into the ceiling and there's two different approaches you can do with uh, regards to that one approach would be to demolition the entire um, space or the entire ceiling area and then um, place the units in the most appropriate uh, locations and I say that because there are some uh, rafters and whatnot inside of the ceiling here that you have to be cautious of or you could just simply cut um, openings um, hoping that you um, don't run into one of those rafters being in the center of that location that you're looking for so there's two different approaches and the second approach when you cut in there um, and don't demolition the whole entire ceiling that approach um, could allow could require that you do some patchwork around the uh, frame itself, and sometimes that doesn't look as well. And also, um, when you just cut out a unit, then you're either required to cut out the whole entire dimension of the stucco frame and stick the stucco uh, frame or stick the frame up into the stucco and then cover up the edge if you want a, a nice clean finish or uh, again if you were to redo the entire ceiling then you can finish that up edge up really nicely and um, it just doesn't look as uh, patchwork I guess um, so now there are professional stucco people out there that can really do a great job um, but finding those guys uh, sometimes is a little difficult. Um, in any case, let's just go ahead and look at the uh, overall dimensions that I have from this uh, photo tracing. I have uh, the customer also gave me this 28 6 dimension, which is inside edge to inside edge of this uh, um, post here, I'll call them. Um, and then we got that 8 here. Um, and I think that's all we really need at this point. I know that there is a uh, group of windows back there and um, something to be concerned about. And also um, the center, overall center of this patio could be um, looked at in two different ways. You could look at from this point here to this point here being the overall dimensions. And um, you can see here I have, you know, 10 1 and then I have. 8-7, uh, that 8-7 being from the inside edge of the uh, window coming out to this point here. So um, when you look at those dimensions then of course you're going to center your equipment based off of either this dimension or this dimension and when you center it off of this wider dimension here that would bring the units closer to this edge and with the placement I have on this particular heater right here in the middle, um, it would not meet the clearance to this um, post here. Um, so you'd have to push this one over in order to meet that clearance. You need 18 inches on either side of the uh, heater itself, not the frame, but the heater itself. So here's a picture of the, or an image of the heater. So this edge to this edge is 18 inches minimum. And of course, the same would be on this side. So let's go ahead and uh, turn off those dimensions and look at the uh, overall coverage. This is uh, three um, 4,000 watt units with uh, the uh, flush mount frames. 
and you can see we have a nice coverage we get uh, a little overlapping into the structure itself um, I always like to make sure that we have at least four feet from the you know output of the heater to any type of windows so that we have an you know we don't have too intense of a uh, uh, penetration of that window that glass and I think we have it fine with this application here um, going back to those dimensions again you can see that we have from the center I'm going to use nine feet to the center of the next heater here and then of course whatever remains to the outside edge here I have it at seven eight and eight and that's true on both sides again the center of the heater being central to this uh, dimension opening this what I have as eight foot seven but that could be a little bit different um, as long as it's a little bit bigger that's not a problem because you'll still meet those clearances but if it's a little bit smaller than this eight seven this is called eight eight then you might be um, running into an issue with the clearance over here so there you have that so I also want to just uh, mention now there's two different approaches to um, putting in this um, stucco um, across the uh, flush mount frame. First of all, this is a two by eight here, and then we have some, uh, I think this is three eight drywall that surrounds the entire, or lines the entire box that's gonna be um, in the ceiling area and that could be the rafter, it doesn't really matter, but as long as we have an eight inch clearance total, um, you can meet the, the requirement here. And you can see that this is the drywall cap. This is the drywall cap here with a subfloor, but I think what we're gonna be dealing with is something like this upper finish here. But I wanna recommend that um, you go into having a, a stucco that has a half inch clearance from the holes in the frame and these are the holes in the frame right here that you can see and um, so that way your your finish looks much better so you, this edge of the frame is actually tucked underneath the stucco itself um, here's an image of the frame where it's applied to the stucco on the outside and then you could just you know run some screws into you know whatever frame work that you have to hold the frame in place um, so that's that here's the minimum clearances here you can see we've got 65.25 and uh, 11 and three quarters there also you need to have a junction box location so that you can run a whip inside of the frame uh, casing there now there's some tabs here this tab allows you to drop the unit <clears throat> so that the unit itself is at the um, same elevation as the outside edge of the stucco on the ceiling itself so you would lower this L bracket this is the L bracket here there's a couple other image of it there but you lower that L bracket so that you're at the same level when you place the heater in it's down to that same level um, and that's true if you had some wood finish as well. Um, that's just a side note. And then, of course, you can move it up if you uh, were to place the uh, um, frame on the surface of the stucco. So let's go back here. So there you have it. There's the uh, frame on the surface. And I went ahead and just um, did a... Uh, uh, mimic the same um, application over here and this one here you can see where I have the stucco finished all the way up to one half inch um, to these knockout holes here for fresh air to be circulating around the stucco frame and you just get a nice a nicer um, appearance and the finish of that and uh, now technically I guess I didn't bring the heater all the way down and I should have so um, let's go ahead and do that real quick. It'll take me a second. Let's see if I can just move it down. Oh, there we go. And that should be, let's see here. 
that should be uh, sufficient for this application. You can see that the uh, heater still isn't protruding uh, uh, other than the grill itself, but the heater isn't protruding past the stucco frame there. Also, you know, if you have fans in here, you want to make sure that your ray isn't penetrating the fan blade. Um, so this is uh, nine feet centers, so that'd be four and a half feet to this center. And these blades, I think on this particular unit, are 36 inch uh, long blades. So you want to make sure that you don't uh, penetrate the blade, especially if it's uh, wood or even some synthetic material. Synthetic materials tend to droop if they get hit by this ray. Okay. Well, there you have it. I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions or need some assistance in your outdoor heating application, uh, we're here to help. Feel free to give us a call or just email us directly. My name is Steve Walton from Tropic Heating and PatioHeat.com. Thank you and have a great day.